before we do the cardiac cycle, let me give you an example of well, something you should all know, right? If I start off with a left atrium, so let's see if we could do this. Fill in the blanks, right? You've had this before. You should know this for Monday, right? A bonus thing, all right? Let's go through this. All I care about is chambers, great vessels, or valves. Okay? After the left atrium, what comes next? A chamber, great vessel, or a valve? Valve. valve. What valve? Bicuspid. Is there another name for that? Yep. Bicuspid or mitral. You could use either or. It does not matter. Remember, you can abbreviate. I'll allow this. L for left, R for right, A for artery, V for vein. You're going to have to spell valve. I've had actually a student come up and say, they put down the mitral V. I said, what is that? What do you mean V? Well, that's the mitral vein. And you said we could use V for vein. I said, that's the mitral vein? You sure about that? Yeah. And you said we could use it. But I took the whole thing off. I mean, there's no such thing as a mitral vein, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's not that I'm hard. I, I'm wondering what students are thinking with this stuff. So A for artery, V for vein, R for right, L for left. Everything else you've got to spell out. Okay. So after the bicuspid valve, what comes next? A chamber, great vessel, or valve? Chamber. What chamber? Left ventricle. Okay. Be careful, last three letters. Common mistake. Some people put that as spelling the cow part. And that's wrong. Right? Alright? What comes next? Chamber, great vessel, or valve? Valve, right? And that's, yeah, the aortic valve. Then you got chamber, great vessel, or valve? The vessel, which is? Aortic. Okay? Be careful with this one spelling, too. I don't know, I see people switching the O and the O, R, and whatever. Just spell it right. Then it goes to the lower extremities, like the legs, and then it comes back to the heart by way of what blood vessel? Inferior vena cava. Okay? Spell inferior and superior if that comes up. Sometimes when people put SUP, is that superficial or is that superior? When we get into blood vessels, we have superficial temporal arteries, there's superior cerebellar. So I don't know what SUP is. Okay? Then it goes into a chamber, great vessel, or valve. Chamber, which is what? The right atrium. Yeah, right atrium. Then a chamber, great vessel, or valve. Valve. What valve? Tricuspid valve. Good. What's the other word for a tricuspid valve? There is no good. That would be a trick question. I don't do trick questions. All right. Then you got a chamber, great vessel, or valve. Chamber, which one? Yeah, that's the right ventricle. And then you got chamber, great vessel, or valve? Valve, what valve? Pulmonary or pulmonic? Doesn't matter. You can still use it either or. Pulmonic valve. And then you got chamber, great vessel, or valve? Great vessel, which is what? Pulmonary. Yeah, now this one, like I said, you could call this the pulmonary. Trunk, but then it branches off into the two arteries. So you could call this the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary arteries. I will give you full credit. Okay? Then that goes to the lungs, and then from the lungs it goes by way of what? Um, pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins. It's going back to the left atrium. Okay? Alright? Think you could do that in five minutes? Yeah. All right. Now keep in mind, you don't know where I'm going to begin, though. I might start off with a tricuspid valve to the tricuspid valve. It doesn't matter. It's one cycle, right? It's just blood flow going to the next chamber, great vessel, or valve. All right. But it's not bad. I need you to know this. 
Don't even venture off understanding cardiac cycle if you don't know this. This is the ABCs. You can't make words if you don't know the letters. Okay? This you need to know precisely. You should know it even closing your eyes. Alright? Questions on that? The heart is a pump which must circulate blood through two different but interconnected vascular systems. The smaller of these systems is the pulmonary system. Blood returning from the upper part of the body is delivered to the right atrium of the heart by the superior vena cava, one of the body's two largest veins, while blood returning from the lower part of the body is delivered to the right atrium by the other major vein, the inferior vena cava. Contraction of the right atrium in each cardiac cycle forces blood into the right ventricle. This is followed by contraction of the right ventricle, which pumps blood into the pulmonary artery, sending it on through the blood vessels of the lungs. As the right ventricle contracts and pressure within the right ventricle rises, the tricuspid valve situated at the opening between the right atrium and right ventricle shuts, preventing any backflow. The pressure generated by contraction of the right ventricle soon opens the pulmonary valve and blood enters the circulation of the lungs. After passing through the circulation of the lungs, the blood, having been recharged with oxygen and having rid itself of carbon dioxide, is returned through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. The left atrium, too, contracts, forwarding blood into the left ventricle in order to fill it before it contracts. As the powerful left ventricle contracts, the mitral valve shuts, preventing backflow into the left atrium. The aortic valve opens and blood is forced into the aorta which distributes it to the rest of the body apart from the lungs. As the contraction comes to an end and pressure in the aorta falls, the aortic valve snaps shut to prevent backflow into the left ventricle. In what case is going to use the uh, superior vena cava? If I said arms, right, anything above the diaphragm would take the superior vena cava, right? If I said heart muscle, then what would be the next thing over here? If I said cardiac muscle, then what would this be? Bingo, coronary sinus, okay, yes. See? you got to put it all together. That's what I mean is, is it, don't memorize it, understand, okay, it's going to, what's coming from the cardiac muscle to the coronary system, not to the coronary sinus. you, you got to put it all together. I don't want you to isolate things. I want you to be able to see how this whole thing comes together. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's the coronary veins that have that dump into the coronary sinus, okay? Which I didn't ask you to, to memorize. But if you know it as a coronary sinus, you're, you're okay, okay? All right, other questions? I'm going to take a sec. I'm going to show you. I'm going to leave this up here because I'm going to do some other art therapy here because we're going to refer to that, okay? So let's talk about the cardiac cycle. Before we get into that, I gotta give you some facts so you understand this, okay? Basically, the cardiac cycle is all the events that happen. If you know the blood flow through the heart, then you know the blood is going through there, but when does contraction happen? When does diastole happen and so forth? Where does the EKG get put into all here? Where is the pressure? What comes out? When do the valves open? When do they close? All of that. That's the events. That's what we call the cardiac cycle. And I'm going to dissect it for you, for you. Um, and it's definitely in your textbook um, on this one picture. I'll show you what's, what's going on. Okay? So the heart is two pumps that work together. You have the right heart and the left heart, right? And it's repetitive contraction, repetitive relaxation. Contraction, relaxation. Systole, diastole. Systole, diastole. And it keeps on doing that. And the blood moves through the circulatory system, going from a high pressure to a low pressure. Okay? So, if I said that the pressure in the left ventricle is higher than the pressure in the left atrium, which valve is going to close? The pressure in the left ventricle is higher than the pressure in the left atrium. Which valve is going to close? Bicuspid or mitral. Right? They only go one way. 
if I said that the pressure in the right atrium is higher than the pressure in the right ventricle, what valve is affected and what is it going to do? If the right atrial pressure is higher than the right ventricular pressure, a valve is going to be affected. Which valve? The tricuspid valve. Is the valve going to open or is it going to close? It's going to open, right? You see how, if you don't know this, you're not going to understand all this, right? This is, you need to know this. That's why I'm doing that bonus thing, really, to get you on this. Otherwise, you'll be lost with all this. Okay. Now, keep in mind that the atrioventricular valves are the valves that are going to be between the atria and the ventricles, right? These are going to be your tricuspid and your bicuspid valves. Correct? Okay. And then we have the semilunar valves, and these are the ones that are the valves that are going to make the blood leave the heart. We got the pulmonic or pulmonary valve, making the blood go to the lungs, and then you got the aortic valve that's going to make the blood go to the aorta. So we call those the semilunar valves because of the way that they're shaped. Okay? Now if you understand one pump, one side, you'll understand the other. It's going to work the same way. So instead of me teaching you the left part and the right part, I'm only going to teach you the left part. It's the same thing. If the bicuspid valve closes on the left heart, at the same time the tricuspid valve is going to close on the right side. So if you understand the left side, the right side is going to be the same. The only difference is the pressure. There is only one eighth of the pressure on the right side when you compare to the blood pressure on the left side. But the timing of all these events are going to occur at the same time. So let's just concentrate on just the left part. Don't make it too confusing and throw in the right part. So then how many valves are we going to be dealing with when we deal with the left heart? Two. Good. Which valves? Bicuspid or mitral? Same thing. And aortic. Good. Okay. So, this is what's happening with those two. And this is the legend on here, because I don't want you to get mixed up. Mitral valve is MV. AV stands for aortic valve. Be careful. I don't want you to think it's in your notes that you're writing. Some people are writing AV for atrioventricular valve. That's not what I'm using it for this legend. Does that make sense? All right. That's why I have to do this here. LA is left atrium. LV is left ventricle. Okay. It's easier for you to manage. Now, if you understand this, then the next step is this. And I kind of did it with you already. If the left atrial pressure is greater than the left ventricular pressure, the mitral valve will open, right? Does that make sense? If this is the left atrium, and down here is the left ventricle, and here's the mitral valve, if the left atrial pressure is higher than the left ventricular pressure, this will open. If the left ventricular pressure is higher than the left atrial pressure, It'll close and cause that sound to occur. Love, right? And then we got the two other pressures between the left ventricular pressure and the aortic pressure, right? Now we got a blood vessel we got to deal with. So we have the aorta having blood pressure in there too. If the left ventricular pressure is higher than the aortic pressure, What's that aortic valve going to do? Open. Right? If the left ventricular pressure is higher than the aortic pressure, let me do it this way. What about if I draw it like this? This is the 
the left atrium. This is the left ventricle. This is the aorta. You see how I'm drawing it? I'm only drawing one side. There's another side over there. We're not dealing with the right side. If you understand this, the right side is the same. Then we have a valve here. What valve is that? Right, that's the aortic valve. You have another valve over here. What valve is that? That's the mitral valve or bicuspid valve. Can you visualize this better now? All right. If the left atrial pressure is greater than the left ventricular pressure, the right mitral valve opens. If the left ventricular pressure is higher than the left atrial pressure, it closes. Right? You need to know blood flow. If the left ventricular pressure is higher than the aortic pressure, the aortic valve opens. And if the aortic valve, I'm sorry, if the aorta Aortic pressure is higher than the left ventricular pressure. What happens to that? Closes. Valves ensure one-way blood flow. You can see there's going to be problems when you have mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation. Where you have to put this stuff together. We clear with this. Let me know. I don't want to move forward, and I'm fine. It's a small class. We can come with it before it. Be clear with that before we go any further. This picture is okay. You can visualize it, okay? And that's everything up there. I just explained. All right. Here we go. Bear with me. Don't write anything down. You don't need to. Everything will be recorded. Everything will be up here. Okay. My powerpoints will be there. You don't need to write anything. It'll be okay. Okay, with you guys. Let's just go through the story. Now, let me explain to you what this is showing. This is kind of like the, every textbook has something similar to this. This is the one I want to give you, and it's, uh, I think your book has a, it's kind of, it's all on one page. It's very busy. There's a lot of things in here. And I know the students look at this kind of stuff, and they see a graph, and they say WTF. And I realize that, okay? Um, but I'm going to get you so you understand this. It's not hard to understand. This is the relationship between the volume of blood versus the pressures in the chambers. If you understand this, if you understand this, you're ready for this. Trust me, okay? Now, let me explain to you what's going on here. Um, yeah, I see the same colors, so just so you can visualize it, this is going to be green. That. This is blue. And this is going to be, well, it's orange, but I'm not orange. So this is. Okay. You okay with that? I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. So this is what we have here, all right? Um, first, let's deal with the pressures. And I have a slide for each one of these. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to dissect it much easier than just this. I want to at least introduce you to these, this, this picture here, and then I'll show you how to use it. Okay, here we have the pressure. And there's three pressures to be concerned about. One, two, three. We have the left atrial pressure, which is in blue on here. You have the 
left ventricular pressure that's going to be orange. And then you have up here the aortic pressure, which is in green. Going through the cycle, over time, this is what's happening, from 0.1 second to 0.8 seconds. Just over time, pressures are going to change, and we've got to talk about that, making the valves open and close. Then, I want you to be concerned about the amount of blood that's in the left ventricle. So that's what this is in here. Left ventricular volume. There's a point when it fills up pretty hot. And there's a point when it ejects the blood. There's a lot less blood over here. Right? So that must be contraction going on. See pressure going up, blood going out. Okay? But I want you to also recognize that this blood volume never goes down to zero. That there's always going to be at least a little blood in the ventricles, even when it squeezes out blood. There's always going to be some trickle, some little blood in there. 60 milliliters or so will stay in there. Okay? It doesn't go all the way down, but there's something left in there. The amount of blood that's left in there, kind of, you could subtract to figure out how much came out, though. So we call it an ejection fraction, which we'll talk about, which radiologists will start doing when they start doing echocardiograms. You understand that concept. But let's not talk about that yet. But it does not go down to zero. And you could also appreciate, because we just talked about the EKG, you could also appreciate where the EKG, parts of the EKG occur with the pressures and the amount of blood that's going through the left ventricle. So there's a lot there, but we're going to break it up. I also show you where the love and dub occur, where the S1 or the first heart sound and the second heart sound occur. So I broke this down into A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, D, and E. And it goes right back to A. So that you, and I have A, and you can see what's going on in A and B, and I have a slide for each one of these so you can refer to. Okay? Anybody have any questions about how this is built? And we're going to go through step by step. No? Okay. All right, and this here, this little note, is just telling you that the volume does not go down to zero. That there's always going to be some residual blood in the left ventricle. When I say left ventricle, I'm also talking about the right ventricle, right? We're just okay. All right, so let's start with B. I could start with A, but we'll get back to that. I think it's easier to start with B, the area where this is right here, B. Okay, that's what this is. We call this atrial contraction. Obviously, when the atria contract, that's the P wave. That's atrial depolarization. Bring it all together now. So this is the beginning of the P wave, and blood. The blood pressure in the left atrium is high. When it's high and the left ventricular pressure is low, which valve is open? The mitral valve. Right, the mitral valve. So as that's opening, blood is just pouring in through gravity. If that's open, blood is in the left atrium and it's just pouring down into the left ventricle. You don't need to contract the left, or the, yeah, the left atrium because blood is just going down and just saying thank God for gravity. But when there's 30% left in the left atrium, it'll give the opportunity for the left atrium to squeeze out that last 30%. So you will have an atrial contraction when 30% is left. Do you need to have it contract? Not necessarily. There's people that walk around with their pacemakers not working. They don't need to contract it, because most blood has just went from the left atrium to the left ventricle, just through gravity. You're not going to die because of that, but you can't do everything you used to do. If your pacemaker SA node doesn't fire, you normally could walk 10 blocks, no problem. Now I could barely do, let's say, one block. But you could do one block, you just need to take some more time to take a break, and you now need to get an artificial pacemaker, and a doctor will see that. 
because most blood has went from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Not all of it, though. Okay? So the left atrial pressure is high. That's why that mitral valve is open. And you can see over here in B, you can see that there's a bump here. The blue line, there's a little bump there. That little bump is saying that the, when the left atrium contracts, it's going to squeeze the blood pressure in the left atrium is going to go up because you're squeezing that blood. It's squeezing here, which means that the blood pressure here is going to increase. Does that make sense? When it squeezes, it's also going to push the blood right into the left ventricle, and it's going to, for a bump, the left ventricular pressure will also increase. Right? That makes sense. Pressure just gets converted from here over to here. That's why when you look over here, the light blue, there's a bump over there, but also the orange has a bump in there too, showing that the left ventricular pressure goes up with it. You'll also see as this left atrium squeezes, it's going to squeeze a little pop load of blood more in here. So that's what's going to happen here on the volume curve. On the volume curve, you're now going to have this little bump of blood. It's just the left atrium just push that extra amount of volume in there. Okay? And that's what happens with this. All right? That's what's happening, and, and, and that happens with the P wave. The P wave is happening with the atrial contraction. Okay? Questions on that? All right, let's go to C. This is called isovolmetric ventricular contraction. I know it's a mouthful, but let me just tell you what it means really fast. Volmetric, volume, it's telling you amount of something. Iso means without change, like isotonic, right? We learned about that. So isovolmetric means that there's no change in the volume. And it's ventricular contraction. So what's happening here is during the ventricular contraction at this stage, there's a contraction happening, but the blood is going no place and no blood is coming in. There's no change in the blood volume. So that's why we call it isovolmetric ventricular contraction. So now the impulse of this action potential goes into and becomes the QRS of the EKG. Now, the left ventricle is going to start contracting, which means that the left ventricular pressure is going to go up or down. If this starts contracting, what's going to happen to the pressure in the volume? Yeah. Well, it's going to go up. So now the left ventricular pressure is increased more than the left atrial pressure. Which valve is going to close? mitral valve is closed. Does that make sense? Like I told you before, left ventricular pressure is higher than left atrial pressure, mitral valve closes. Okay? Now, we didn't talk about the, H, uh, the aortic valve, but that's been closed the whole time. So look what's happening here. The aortic valve is closed, and now the mitral valve is closed. But yet this is, con this is contracted. So as this is contracting, the blood is not going anywhere. It has no place to go. See it? So this is why we call it isovolmetric. You're not increasing the blood volume, you're not decreasing the blood volume. Isovolmetric ventricular contraction. The ventricles are contracted, and the blood is not being changed. The blood volume is not changing. So when that mitral valve closes, love, right? That's our first heart sound. You'll also notice that here, C, where this line is over here, the volume of blood, this line over here, is perpendicular with the floor. It's not going up, it's not going down. It's isovolmetric. 
It's a flat line right there. That's why it said left, uh, left ventricular blood volume cannot change, isobiometric. Note the flat horizontal trace on the volume curve, right there. It's flat. Because that has no place to go. This valve is closed, this valve is closed, but this is contracted. As this is contracting, notice what's happened to the left ventricular pressure. This orange line up here. It's increasing dr dramat dramatically. You see it? Because the left ventricular pressure is increasing. Questions? Okay. So let's look at D now. This bigger area here. This is ventricular ejection. Now the blood is going to need to go out. This pressure is going to get so high that it's going to be higher than what the aortic pressure is. Sense? When this is really contracting, then the aortic valve is going to open. And once the left ventricular pressure is greater than that aortic pressure, like I said, the aortic valve is going to open. That's what's going to happen right here. Right where the green, green line here is the aortic pressure. Once the orange line, the ventricular pressure, is higher than the aortic pressure, it's going to open. The aortic valve will open. And when it opens, the amount of blood that's going to come out of the left ventricle is a lot. And you'll see the blood volume decrease drastically. Question? Yeah. Um, if the mitral valve is not working properly, and the left ventricle is, is um, when you're not working properly. Because sometimes you say you can't. Are you talking about stenosis? Or are you talking about regurgitation? Uh, stenosis. Let, I'll tell you what. Let me answer those afterwards. Let me talk about the normal thing, and then I'll talk about the because uh, I, I, um, it may confuse you and other people. So let's just talk about normal blood flow, the normal cardiac cycle. Then we can throw in these other things. It's, it's a good point. All right. So the blood volume will decrease because it's now getting ejected into the aorta. Remember, this is just blood volume in the left ventricle. So now think about it. Blood is pouring out of the left ventricle and is filling the aorta, which means gradually, isn't the aorta pressure, aortic pressure going to get higher? Sure. And this will be going lower. You see? So your aortic pressure is going to go up. And you can see that green line going up. The left ventricular pressure is going down because there's less blood in there. It's being shot out into the aorta. So as the left ventricular or left ventricle repolarizes, starts to relax, that's a T wave, then that's where the left ventricular pressure crosses over the aortic pressure. See it's crossing. It's all in the D section. Okay? Now, we have another part here, E. That isovolmetric word is popping up again. This is called isovolmetric. Again, what does that mean? Isovolmetric. Same volume. Same volume. Does not change. The volume does not change. But this is now called isovolmetric ventricular relaxation. Not contraction like before. So now what's going to happen is when the aortic pressure 
is higher than the left ventricular pressure, which valve is going to close? Aortic valve. So meanwhile, mitral valve is still closed, and now the aortic valve is closed. So whatever blood you've got left in here, 60 milliliters or whatever residual blood, it's not going to change. Nothing could come in, nothing could come out. And yet, this is when the left ventricle is relaxing. Isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. The volume is not changing as the ventricle relaxes. Make sense? Okay. And you can also note over here where E is, this line where the blood volume is, is parallel to the floor. As much as we saw it over, the blood is not entering or exiting at this level here. Isovolumetric. It's horizontal, parallel to the floor. Meanwhile, blood is still pouring into the left atrium. While all this is happening, blood is still pouring in the left atrium. Where's that blood coming from? From the lungs. Right? Now we got ventricular filling. The left ventricle is relaxed, but this is but the mitral valve and aortic valves are closed. But this is filling with blood. So gradually the left atrium is going to increase its pressure. Right? Does that make sense? It's filling up with blood. And you can see that. It's increasing over here, the pressure. There comes to a point where this pressure is going to be higher than the left ventricular pressure. As the blood builds up in here, what is that going to do to the mitral valve? It opens. This will open because the left atrial pressure is higher than the left ventricular pressure. And that's going to, just because gravity is going to come down, it's going to fill in the left ventricle. And this happens during diastole. The left ventricle is relaxed, diastole. So blood is coming from the left atrium to the left ventricle during diastole. It has to be. And that cycle repeats and repeats and repeats. And I know I spent, what, maybe a half an hour talking about this, but that's only like less than a, uh, less than a second that your heart does that. Up to like 0.8 seconds, right? During one cardiac cycle, all four heart chambers go through a contraction period called systole and a relaxation period called diastole. As a result of the cyclic contraction and relaxation of the ventricles, blood pressure in the pulmonary and systemic circuits rises and falls. Let us consider a complete cycle for the left side of the heart. Chamber pressures and volumes can be shown on a graph. Here, the red line traces the pressure inside the left ventricle. The green line shows pressure in the aorta and the blue line traces the pressure within the left atrium. We will begin our look at the cardiac cycle at the end of a cardiac cycle. At this point the atria and ventricles are in diastole and the ventricles are roughly 70 percent filled with blood. The cardiac cycle begins with atrial systole. As the left atrium contracts blood remaining in the left atrium is forced into the left ventricle. The left atrium then relaxes and atrial diastole begins. 
As the left atrium relaxes, the left ventricle contracts and ventricular systole begins. Ventricular contraction increases blood pressure within the left ventricle. When left ventricular pressure exceeds left atrial pressure, the bicuspid valve shuts, preventing blood from flowing back into the atrium. Ventricular pressure continues to increase until it exceeds the blood pressure in the aorta. At this point, the aortic semilunar valve is forced open and blood flows into the aorta. When the left ventricle finishes contracting, it enters the period of ventricular diastole. Blood pressure in the left ventricle declines rapidly. When it falls below the aortic pressure, the semilunar valve closes and prevents backflow. The left atrium remains in diastole throughout ventricular systole and continues throughout most of ventricular diastole. During ventricular diastole, venous blood enters the left atrium, and when blood pressure within the left atrium exceeds blood pressure in the left ventricle, the bicuspid valve opens and passive filling of the ventricle occurs. This continues until this cardiac cycle ends, and atrial systole marks the beginning of the next cycle. So, systole, you put it together, systole is a combination of isovolumetric ventricular contraction and ventricular ejection. It's when the heart is contracted. Diastole, the heart's relaxed, is going to be isovolumetric ventricular relaxation and when the ventricles are filling. You okay with that? Aren't you glad you joined AMP2? No matter who you get, you still got to do the cardiac cycle. Maybe some teachers might just say, here, do it on your own. Or they do it very briefly. Or they go through it like me. I don't know. But you can't get away from it. It is what it is, the cardiac cycle. You think that's bad, wait until you do the menstrual cycle. Ooh, you're going to love that one. Deals with a lot of hormones, your favorite subject. <laughs> but that's much later.